uh, I assume we're on right now. <laughs> I have we, no idea. Our mantras. We, uh, oh, there it if is. If you are listening to this on podcast, then nothing will appear wrong or weird, except that I'm mentioning the fact that we're starting 12 minutes late. Uh, but, you know, that's just the way it goes. Uh, <laughs> welcome back to the Atheist Experience. I'm your host, Russell Glasser, and Phil uh, Session is here with me today. <laughs> Good uh, afternoon, everyone. Yeah. How are you doing? Very tired, but very good. Doing okay. very well this weekend. Uh, happy uh, day after Darwin Day, everybody. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> uh, today is February 12th, 2017. We're a live call in the internet based atheist TV show broadcasting from Austin, Texas, dedicated to promoting positive atheism and the separation of church and state. You can catch us live every Sunday on YouTube uh, normally. <laughs> Wait, I hear, I, actually, I think they said that YouTube is actually starting now, but, uh, uh, or oh, Ustream.tv, where we know we're broadcasting at this moment. The official Atheist Experience website is www.atheist-experience.com. You can provide feedback by commenting on the official show blog at freethoughtblogs.com slash AXP. Email us at tv at atheist-community.org, or you can join the Atheist Experience official discussion group on Facebook. If you enjoy this show, please check out our related podcast, The Nonprofits, currently airing on the first and third Wednesdays of every month. You can find links at the Atheist Experience website. The next Nonprofits will be recorded this Wednesday, February 15th. Uh, I was not on the last episode because I was on a plane to uh, Irvine, California, where I got to go to like an engineering conference and then uh, the, later that week I did a talk for the Secular Student Alliance at Riverside who are uh, oh. a great bunch of people. How was that? Huh? How was that, the talk? That, were there. From a personal point of view, I think it was one of the best uh, talks I've ever done. <laughs> I mean, um, so, and so relative to myself, pretty good. <laughs> um, the cast and crew of the Atheist Experience will be going to dinner after the show at Star of India, 2900 West Anderson Lane. We'll be arriving around 6.15 p.m. or so, so you're welcome to join us. Uh, now, I do want to mention we actually have a uh, larger than usual audience out there today. Uh, hi, audience. <laughs> and I mean, live. Those folks. Here <laughs> in the studio. And also, speaking of the Secular Student Alliance, uh, some members of the SSA at Baylor came by today. Hey, guys. Whoa. <laughs> uh, and uh, they gave me this, uh, this sweet t-shirt. <laughs> the swag. Um, the swag. And... I just want to mention, uh, I dig the Secular Student Alliance as an institution in general, uh, but the Baylor <laughs> SSA in particular is, some, is something, I mean, like, I have so much respect for those guys because Baylor is a uh, Baptist university, mm -hmm. and they, uh, they do not actually officially recognize the SSA as technically existing with the school. So they went ahead and made one anyway. And just uh, like when, it, when I uh, talked to them last year, uh, we met <laughs> sort of semi-clandestinely in a Unitarian church. We didn't go anywhere on campus. Um, <laughs> So uh, that was cool. And also, uh, I couldn't help mentioning something in particular that happened at, at my Baylor talk, uh, which is that I, the talk that I give to secular student groups is usually about skepticism. And there's kind of a funny anecdote about how uh, on YouTube, um, there, there are uh, communities of people who believe that uh, the country is run by alien lizard people. <laughs> and what was funny was when I did the Baylor talk, somebody in the front of the audience was, was like, I used to believe that. Um, I, I thought you, at first you were going to say that they did. I just, yeah. Whoa, I, okay. I, cool. I mean, you know, to me, I, I mean, it sounds like maybe I'm calling out that person to make fun of. But in fact, I mean, what's so neat is that they've got a community of people who, who bring in some folks who have had kind of a sheltered life and, and kind of expose them to 
uh, a broader way of looking at things. And to me, that's, that's what we're all here for. <laughs> so, um, you know, glad you could make it, guys. Um, I'm, glad, I'm glad that group can actually survive without the official university yeah. support on that side and not being a recognized right. student group on that side. So major kudos to that group. I know I didn't have one. <laughs> I'm not sure if there was one at University of Texas at Arlington when I was there. Uh, but I know there was one down at uh, UTSA now, and I know they're very active uh, down there, Sean, and everything. So mm -hmm. it's, yeah. it's a wonderful organization. So I wish all the luck to the Baylor SSA group. Right. Hey, Sean. Keep, keep trucking <laughs> along. <clears throat> so um, anything yeah. on your mind? Uh, well, I did want to uh, thank everyone that came out this past Friday. Yeah. Uh, we actually had our 20th. Uh, 20th anniversary for the Atheist Community of Austin. Mm -hmm. uh, so we had that celebration here. That was awesome. Uh, There's a lot of folks that actually came out. I was surprised. I was the, also <laughs> surprised. Uh, on the sheer uh, numbers. Uh, and we <laughs> managed to slip in a little business because we were yes. also uh, doing this as a way of getting people together for the, uh, I guess, quarterly now uh, membership, uh, membership meeting. meeting. Yes, that's and I thought that people would just scatter after we started bringing up some ACA <laughs> business. <clears throat> but in fact, uh, the people who did show up were very engaged in talking about stuff like addendums to the <laughs> addenda to the Constitution. So, uh, you know, I've, I've, and hardly anybody left right after that. Right. We were here so, for um, quite a while. I think it was after 10 o'clock or so by the time yeah, it was things a great really, time. Things Lots really of people wrapped came up. It was out. awesome. Uh, very pleased. Yeah, so I want to thank everyone for coming out uh, for that. Uh, I had a few announcements, as I always do, okay. uh, as I'm sure, <laughs> sure people are very used to yep. uh, by now. I uh, coordinate the volunteer events that the ACA does. And so I want to give a small shout out on the upcoming events that we have uh, here soon. The first one will actually be this next Saturday. Uh, we'll be doing it for the first time. This is, a, I guess, a first for the ACA. We'll be helping to plant uh, tree samplings along Boggy Creek and Hargrave Road in the, I guess it's more southern side of Austin. So all the details for that, you can find it on, the face, on Facebook. I was about to say the Facebook, wow. It's one of those moments. Uh, <laughs> on Facebook, on Meetup, and our website, atheist-community.org, uh, has that information. If you want to show up, just read the instructions there. They have instructions like wearing long pants because you'll be dealing with poison ivy. Um, have a bottle of water. You know, th those kind of safety things. Um, are part of that. <coughs> on that following Saturday, the 25th of February, we'll be doing another ramp with the Texas Ramps Project. Uh, so I'll be posting the location for that one week prior. So by the time we're doing the tree, sampli uh, tree sampling plantings next Saturday, I should have that location for that ramp bill. So if you're interested in building ramps or you live around the Austin area and want to come out to help, we've actually had a few people come from San Antonio to help as well. Just you know, look at the information online and show up and we'll guide you through the process and get a ramp bill for someone who's low income and has a motor disability and lives in a home that's off of ground level. So it's helping them be able to enter in and out of their home a lot easier. And some people have been waiting for months to years on that list in order to get a ramp. So I like the fact that we've had a lot of dedicated people in the ACA uh, that have come out every month to actually help build ramps there because they are swamped in Travis County where Austin is located. They're trying to do more, but they just, they don't have the people yeah. to do so. It's, it's really a, a urgent need on that side. So, so that's coming. And the only thing, only other thing that I want to mention was in the third, I'm sorry, the second weekend of March, that March 11th, if I'm not mistaken, we'll be helping out at the Capital Area Food Bank, uh, also known as the Central Texas Food Bank, here in Austin and information if you want to help out we'll be helping out in the warehouse it'll be in the afternoon time uh, which I got a few uh, a few comments about that um, doing all of our volunteer things early in the morning eight o'clock nine o'clock <laughs> for some people that wasn't as applicable for them so this one starts at 1 30 in the afternoon on March 11th uh, goes until it's 1 30 to 4 30 just those three hours and we'll be helping pack boxes ship them uh, get and get them ready for shipment to local food banks around Texas uh, and around this area. So that'll be going on. It is open to children as well, uh, down to age eight and above. So if you have a family, you wanna bring them out, um, all the information for that, you have to sign up. This is the one unique thing about this.
for the food bank, you have to sign up through their website. And you can find that on our website, atheist-community.org, on Meetup and Facebook. All three have that website, and you go there and register, go through all of the details and uh, all the liability releases, and that's how you get your name on the list. You have to make an account for yourself and for your children separately. Everyone has to have an account and agree to these liability releases, which are lengthy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, this, so uh, take a look at that if you like, and that is all that I have. All right. Uh, I have just one, <clears throat> well, maybe a couple of other quick things to say. First of all, for the past few weeks, we've been uh, mentioning that the, athe that the uh, atheist community of Austin was doing a survey to find out more about uh, our members and our viewers, and I asked uh, people... Uh, we both we asked people on the show to uh, check that out and uh, respond. Now I talked to uh, Julia recently, who's the uh, marketing consultant who set up this survey for us, and she said normally when she sets up a survey like this, uh, she expects maybe about 500 responses total. Mm -hmm. um, so we got 700 responses, just that th the responses that got comments. <laughs> like oh, wow. long detailed comments at the end <laughs> saying things that they wanted to talk about. In total, uh, the, as of uh, like I think two weeks ago, which is when the survey was supposed to end, but we extended a little longer, we got 2,623 responses at wow. that point, uh, and it, was, it still ran for a little longer. She said, uh, I was expecting about 500 total, and I didn't realize how invested your viewers are. <laughs> and I said, I did. <laughs> um, also, it seems like uh, a lot of the comments were really, really nice, and hardly any of them were mean, which is the only thing which maybe surprised me. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I did expect some... Uh, other comments there. Yeah. That's, that's good to hear. That's awesome. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, uh, we may be giving like uh, some high level uh, comments about what we find out from that later. We may not, but uh, rest assured we're going to use what you sent us. So thanks, you, thanks for, to everyone who participated in the survey. Uh, and <laughs> let's see. I don't know. I just want to give a quick mention. You know, as I've mentioned before on the show, like, uh, you know, we are careful about how we talk about politics since as an organization we don't endorse particular candidates or parties. Uh, what we are allowed to do freely is discuss issues that are important to us. And skepticism is really important to me and, and <laughs> taking uh, facts and reality seriously is important to me, which is a lot of what I talked about at UC Riverside. I just wanted to mention that our new officially now education secretary, Betsy DeVos. <laughs> um, yuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, the thing is, I got my start in online skepticism about 20 years ago uh, when I wrote a, I mean, you know, I've been an atheist for a long time, but really sort of reaching a lot of people was when I wrote a page about how terrible Amway is as a business. Uh, and Betsy DeVos is the wife of a head honcho of Amway, uh, which uh, <laughs> um, is kind of, you know, a, I'm not going to mince words, it's a pyramid scheme that rips people off and has this weird cult-like vibe and has uh, super Christian roots and uh, now one of the people in that family is in charge of our entire education system which is also something I take really seriously because uh, you know kids need to learn critical thinking and science and DeVos I think also has a lot of creationist ties so these are gonna be a fun few years yeah that's Guns for Grizzlies, DeVos. Oh, that yeah. Be Guns for Grizzlies. It would be a very interesting right. thing. Anyway, I don't have any particular recommendations except, wow, what happened? <laughs> <clears throat> Still working on that now. Uh, all right. So, uh, ready for callers? Go for it. Chuck in Honolulu. You are first today. 
Okay. Hey, thanks. What's up with you? I, I, I first of all, I wanted to say you guys are really amazing. This is uh, uh, the uh, talk show where you allow people to come oh, in. Oh, I'm sorry. And you, huh? <laughs> yes. Uh, go so on. I, I apologize. Go ahead. But you guys actually have a, you guys actually have a conversation with people. That's really other other shows don't do that. Yes. Well, <laughs> oh. thanks for noticing. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, goodbye. Hey, no, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, you're right about, uh, about these Christians. These, what, they've taken over the Republican Party, and now with Trump, they've taken over the whole darn government. And as soon as they get a right-wing extremist Christian in the court, they'll have total control of the whole government. I, I, you, I guess it would be fair to mention that Trump is so bad at religion that a lot of atheists have suspected or have claimed that maybe he's a closet atheist, which I personally doubt, and I don't care that much. Right. right uh, I, mean, because, I mean, because even if he is an atheist, he brings along these terrible fundamentalist uh, people like Betsy DeVos, so it's exactly. like, what difference does it make to us? Uh, but anyway. Well, if they, have, if they have control of the government, then they're going to pass through all these things that they want to get rid of and these things that they want to control. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, like you said, it's going to be a rocky road. Yeah, well, sure. <laughs> so what else did you call about? Oh, I wanted uh, Jan Peoples one day was, uh, one of these videos anyway, was talking about conspiracy theories. Uh-huh. And I wanted, to, I, wanted to give you, I wanted to give you a conspiracy theory that I can't get anybody else interested in. It's about Is Pearl this Harbor. a conspiracy theory that you are hoping we will take seriously, or are you just saying, ha-ha, look at the funny conspiracy theory? No, 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 no. I'm just saying that uh, I'm trying to get somebody to take this conspiracy theory serious. Okay, I'm, I'm thinking you might wind up disappointed, but uh, the, but I'm not going to prejudice the issue, so go. Okay, uh, first of all, Pearl Harbor was not attacked by the Japanese. It was the U.S. Okay. Navy that, uh, that bombed Pearl Harbor. And how did you learn this amazing fact? God told me. Okay. <laughs> but... <laughs> uh, I can't, okay, so hang on, hang on. I can't actually tell if you're joking right now, so you have to no, tell no, me. No, 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 I'm not joking. I, this is oh. actual, I, there's an actual lot of evidence that the U.S. Navy attacked Pearl Harbor. A heck of a lot of evidence. Well, but did God tell you? Well, he told me about the evidence. Okay, so okay. You, you mean it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm serious. You, I'm you know, God told Mike Huckabee that he was going to be president. president. So uh, I think yeah, God, no, I God is kind of a troll sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm just ta I'm talking about the e there's evidence. There's a heck of a lot of evidence that the U.S. Navy did it. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Okay, you want to hear some of the evidence? Sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Go for okay. it, go for it. <laughs> two, two months prior to the attack, there were no ships in Pearl Harbor. That whole fleet was from San Diego. So how are you going to plan an attack on a harbor that ain't got any ships? And in the second place, there was no damage done. All people, of those, the only... Huh? People died, right? Yeah, about eighteen hundred of them, I guess. But uh, uh -huh. not so no I, you, this but, must be a definition of no damage that I'm not familiar with. Right? Uh, yeah, that threw me for a loop a little bit. Okay, look, they, that's a very shallow harbor. So what they did, they left all. They, everybody was on leave. Everybody had a, a three day pass. They were all in town getting drunk. Almost everybody. Okay. There were very few people on those battleships. Almost nobody. And what happened was they blew a four-foot hole in the side of the battleships. They only went down about 19 feet, and they were all, and there was no damage to them. They raised, in one week, they raised all those battleships, repaired the hole. So, so the, the, actual, the actual number is uh, 2,008 sailors were killed and 710 were wounded, according to Wikipedia. So, I mean, what is the significance of people being on leave? 
Like that's well, because, that's because, like uh, uh, like well over half the number of people who were killed in 9/11, and nobody thinks of that as a trivial event, right? Of course. Well, well, yeah. You know, but here I go bringing up 9/11, yeah, and I imagine yeah. you believe that stuff too. Well, yeah, Can't but presume. that's another thing. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> what? We'll leave that for another day. Okay. One crackpot <laughs> story at a time, please. <laughs> okay. Most of those, almost all of those people that were killed in that attack were on the Arizona. The Arizona was sunk and it was left there. They did not raise the Arizona. They welded the hatches shut so that those people could not get out. Oh. And so they died so, on the sh in the ship. What did you mean by there was no damage? There was no damage to those ships. In one week, they raised all of those battleships. They patched the holes, raised the battleship, well, uh, and cleaned them up. And you well, know all this because God week. told you. But even so, you, you're saying there was no damage, but you're saying that they raised them up and fixed the holes. Were the holes the damage? This is all, this, or is, are you not counting the holes in the ships as damage? I, I don't understand. <laughs> there was one hole punched in the side of each ship. Okay. A four-foot hole. All, it sunk because all the watertight doors were left open. That's the only reason. It's, and they were... There was no other damage. All right. Let, let's hole, say for the, the sake of argument that you were even right about this. What does okay. this have to do with evidence that it was not done by Japanese people? Because there was, if they, if anybody had wanted to attack Pearl Harbor and destroy the place and all the, all the fleet, the place is surrounded by hundreds of fuel tanks. Who said fuel they? Tanks. Who said they were trying to destroy the place? I mean, I wasn't there in the planning room, were you? Like, well, I mean, who, who says that the motivation wasn't just straight-up terrorism, which is, I mean, a concept that we recognize today. You don't have to absolutely obliterate the target to scare the shit out of people. I mean, in this case, it apparently uh, backfired in the sense that America wasn't going to enter the war, right, and then right. they did. Uh, so exactly. that That's doesn't seem it. to have accomplished the goal, but it sure scared people. That's what I'm telling you. The goal uh -huh. was to get America into the war, to declare uh, war on Germany. Right. That was the whole idea of the attack. Okay, let me ask you, besides God, are you aware <laughs> of any other people uh, who would have been in a position to know about the planning of this who maybe leaked stuff? Or, or said directly, uh, like, ha released a particular thing that was specific evidence for this theory that you're coming up with? Well, no, I can't get anybody interested in the no. theory. Okay, so you know how Trump has been in office for three weeks and he can't yeah. get, get his own staff to stop talking about how things are going and he keeps firing people over it and it keeps happening? So oh, you I think, you think uh, I guess, that dozens or hundreds of people within the United States government were deliberately planning the murder of 2,000 United States sailors, and not a single one of them grew a conscience and said anything even a little bit uh, suspicious to directly lead to some actual evidence instead of some weird circumstantial evidence. Have you ever heard of the Manhattan Project? Yeah. Thousands of people worked on the Manhattan Project, uh -huh. and not one of them would leak anything. I'm sorry, have you bomb. heard of the Manhattan Project? <laughs> yeah, the atomic bomb. Yeah, we all have, because everybody knows about it now. Yeah, they know about right? it now because they released the information, but not okay. at the time. Okay, but, time okay, but that anything. happened just as long ago, and, and apparently... Not a peep has come out of it. Nobody wrote any memoirs, you know? Okay, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're John C. Hoff here. I'm showing you Oops. some evidence for this attack. No, you're not. Don't you want to? I'm not? You can't. This is a fact. I'm telling you, they raised those ships in one week uh -huh. and put them all back together. One month after the attack, they were all of those ships, that whole fleet. So the U.S. Navy the engineers are really competent. So what? Wait a minute. 
get attacked. They were supposedly uh, da- uh, completely damaged to those ships, but they weren't. You, ju- you just said they were damaged. You said there were holes no, in them. I said they were sunk. They punched one okay. hole in the side to uh-huh. let water in, and the thing went down about 19 feet. That's a very shallow harbor over there. Okay. And that's all it was. They raised them right up. In one week, they raised them up, cleaned them up, and in two weeks, they supplied them. They were all ready for war, and the whole fleet went off to the Coral Sea to fight the Japanese as they tried to attack Australia. So what? So you don't think that you don't want to, you don't want to look at the evidence? I I heard you your evidence. It's not convincing evidence. at all. There's a lot more evidence. Well, if you have something better, <laughs> I mean, what you know, you uh, I'll, I'll tell you what. what if, told you. if God could call up this show and let us know, uh, also, I bet God could give us, I mean, you know, being omniscient and everything, he could give us some really specific leads to follow about where we could find real evidence of this, right? You can follow these leads that I just told you. Okay, this is but I mean, none of that is actually that evidence of a conspiracy. It's not, no. it's not an evidence that the Japanese did not attack Pearl Harbor? Not from what you presented. They didn't presented. Really. Destroy anything. <laughs> let, let me ask you another thing. Did the Japanese ever deny that they had been involved in the attack? To your knowledge, they didn't have a chance. All the men were killed. Well, later, did, have you heard any Japanese people coming out and saying, "Hey, you guys, you had the wrong person"? <laughs> I, you know, I mean, like, like some Japanese officials who were apparently the victims of this conspiracy. I would think that some of the Japanese government at the time would have had something to say about that, right? A little bit. Oh, well, it's a totally different government in the first place. Uh huh. But were, were they helping the United States government perpetuate this conspiracy? Don't you think the Japanese would have had a little something to gain from uh, propag- from uh, letting people know that the United States was doing this propaganda campaign and covering up the murder of their own citizens? I don't think so. You don't think the Japanese <laughs> would have found that useful in any way? Or at least, no. at least in their interest so not, that they not, don't have... Not the- at least, uh, not the ones that are alive today. Not the one. They, uh, Japan was occupied. Okay, but I mean, Most again, it's been uh, <laughs> my math is bad. Is it seventy years, give or take? Uh, oh dear, I you don't would, know. You but, would ask. You know, that. it's been a lot of a lot of years. Like, well, there uh, you go. You know. See? It's a whole new generation. Okay, but nobody, like, five years later, ten years later, thought that they should bring up this little thing to kind of discredit the United States? Well, most of the leaders were dead. Almost okay. all, all the military leaders were dead. The uh, country was occupied. Did the, they couldn't do anything. But didn't the Japanese uh, government actually take credit for it at the time? No, I don't think so. No, you don't it's think impossible. so. How, how I think they have possibly I think, taken credit for it? <laughs> I think God needs to give you some better it. leads. Yeah. I, you all don't right. believe the evidence? No. You tell me you're just absolutely <laughs> not going to believe no, for real, I don't. Thanks for calling. <laughs> wow. <sighs> okay. Wow. <laughs> Russell, is this how you start the show? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't make them call. I just pick which ones to take. Uh, it, uh, guaranteed somebody is going to accuse me of taking a troll call. <laughs> I'm sure. I, uh, that's that's but, not anything you can uh, help. <laughs> I mean, I don't have any way to know. I think um, he's called before. That voice... Sounds very familiar. Uh, yeah, he does familiar. sound kind of familiar, and I don't know. Oh. Um, I mean, wow. I feel like whether or not that guy was serious, I mean, for real, there are people who think that the government is run by alien lizard people. And so I think it's fair to take on a conspiracy theory call, real or not, uh, in order to make maybe a broader point about conspiracy theories, which is not that... There are no conspiracies. I certainly don't think... I mean, you know, people get together and conspire to do things all the time in secret. Um, But the evidence required to demonstrate a conspiracy that would overturn some piece of well-established historical information, like, you have to follow the same line of reasoning where extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence in general. And, And... you know, 
hey, they fixed the ships really, really quickly is not extraordinary evidence that no. for an incredibly extraordinary claim that all these officials covered this up and nobody leaked anything and nobody in the Japanese government thought to mention that we didn't do this attack. And intentionally killed our own right. uh, our own servicemen for yeah, that that's <laughs> that's quite a bit within there. So I hope that you can get your thoughts together and um, try again in your own venue. I, I'll put it that yeah, way. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say call here, I just said in your own venue. Whoa, for real? Okay, so uh, somebody I recognize is back on the line. Oh, yeah, I see uh, But uh, it's actually, Steve has been waiting longer. Steve is calling from uh, Wisconsin. Hello? Hi. How are you? I'm here. All right, Hi. thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, quick, before you start, quick question. Did you hear the last call? Yeah, I tried not to. <laughs> 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 Um, I was, uh, not, you know, not not that I'm saying the guy is wrong. I didn't really reason it out. I'm, I have my own things on my mind. Uh, okay. I don't, I don't find I don't find conspiracies as far fetched as a lot of people. Okay. As long as there's as long as there's evil, right. greedy, self selfish, conniving, slimy people, you're going to have conspiracies. The FBI will tell True. you that every day. So do you, you uh, do you find it plausible that God personally told that guy that uh, Pearl Harbor wasn't attacked no, by the Japanese? No. Okay, just no, getting I'm that a, out of the way. No, I'm a, yeah, I'm a very devout Christian, but I don't mm -hmm. think there's any holy inspired people today. I think that the last holy inspired people died 2,000 years ago. Okay. And the only thing the only thing we have now that they did not have at the time is we have the full counsel of God, which is the Old <clears throat> and New Testament, which I call 66 books. Uh huh. So that. That's our holy inspiration today. I'm not holy inspired. He's not holy inspired. That doesn't mean that um, God can and won't do something, but it's, I think it's unlikely. I, I think you have to judge it by its merits. Um, did you get my message? I gave the guy a message before um, I actually came on. Uh, I only saw. I only see a couple of sentences. Uh, say, and uh, mainly, it sounds like uh, you're a Christian author, and you want us. You want to let us know that the Bible is true, which you've just said. So, well, go on. My my message is the Bible is true. Uh -huh. It's what you've heard, what you've heard and assumed about it that is not. Okay. Now, I've, I I've the, read it. I, Does that make a difference? I, I'm getting to that. I chose the word assumed very carefully because mm -hmm. most of the time when we read things, we read things with what we've heard. And I, I've had a very unique experience, if, if you'll... Uh, allow me to share it, and um, I've learned that you have to dig for the truth. You don't surface read. That's assuming. Now, okay. uh, you've heard the expression, a person convinced against their will is of the same opinion still, right? Sure. Okay, well, a lot of people don't want to believe the Bible's true, and some people, you know, what they've heard, I can kind of uh, understand why they don't think the Bible is true, but, you know, I'm a critical thinker. And the Bible tells me something quite contrary to what I hear being spouted by a lot of uh, atheists and agnostics. It says to prove all things, First Thessalonians 5.21. Then the very center of the Bible tells me not to believe men. It says better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. And what that means to me is that I'm not supposed to believe my preacher. I'm not supposed to believe you. I'm not supposed to just believe a scientist. I'm supposed to dig for the truth. And uh, and that means getting your hands dirty. Okay. That means spending time. That means that means I don't spend all my time on sports and cleaning my yard. And you know, I dig for truth quite often. You know, I, okay. I'm uh, I want to be accounted worthy. I you know I, I don't just assume things. I I dig for them. Uh, when I'm wrong, I confess it. Um, a, a quick story. So uh, well, I, I mean. Ago, uh, uh, just just checking, how was the Bible written? The Bible was written by holy inspired men. Now, okay. Now you have to ask you have to ask yourself, so, what is holy what does holy inspired mean? Does that mean every single word is right? No, there's trans translations are not holy inspired for one thing. I say holy inspired is not um uh, what's the word I use? It's not um like kinetic or no, that's not the right word. Can't think right now. But anyway, 
Uh, Holy inspired is every time you hear the word, uh, the Lord saith, for instance. Uh-huh. Now, does that mean that everything in the Bible is absolutely correct every time? No, because there's men that interject. There's men that say things that are false, like the Pharisees that Jesus called metaphorically the serpents. Uh, you know, wait, wait, okay, say, so... The so is isn't going to be true. You've said a few times that there haven't been any people who were wholly inspired uh, in the last 2,000 years, right? Correct, correct. Okay, now, suppose... For the sake of argument, I was a person who thought that, that there have been, that maybe there are even wholly inspired people walking around today. H- hypothetically, because I don't, I, I promise. <laughs> um, but suppose I believe that, and I'm listening to you, who are, who is, you are also a fallible person who isn't wholly inspired, and you're telling me with a lot of confidence that nobody is wholly inspired today. How do I know you're right? <clears throat> well, I I um I take things from a very simple perspective. Now, well, if, I don't uh, know if that's if a Bible, reason to think you're right. No, I'm not done. If the Bible contradicts itself, then I have real problems, especially when I hear it, "Thus saith the Lord." Now, I just I just got off the internet after work, and some guy was showing me some things, and he told he led me to a site that allegedly has 101 contradictions or something in the Bible. Mm-hmm. I proved the first four wrong. He, see, he, he counted on the others to show him. He just believed them. He didn't do any digging himself. You know, God's okay. looking for inquiring minds, people that think for themselves. I proved the first four wrong. I said, you know what? I'm done. The first four. For one thing, he didn't understand the history of Israel. And most people did, don't. Did you convince um, him that those weren't contradictions, or did you just uh, satisfy yourself that they weren't? I, I convinced uh, he didn't have a reply, and he was well, shooting off uh, his mouth for days. So, but, I mean, do you think he came away thinking, oh, he's right, those aren't contradictions? Um, I think it would take a lot more talking, and like I said, so no. a, man, a person convinced against his will is of the same opinion still. You know, okay. You, to, so, me, to me, I'm not... So I'm not you were person. satisfied that they weren't contradictions. But, but again, well, you're not a wholly inspired person also, so I'm not sure I'm whether to t- treat that as important. Well, uh, Steve, I had I had a uh, Steve um, before you go. On, I, I just had a a small question. Listening to what you've been saying and saying that you are a critical thinking, that you wanted that you've all the time you dig deep for the truth. When you were doing so, did you already have the idea in mind that the Bible that you were digging into was true? Like, did you already have that mindset about the book, or did you actually enter into it? thinking that it could possibly be false. Did you actually have that, okay. um, that thought process in going over that? Um, years ago, when I looked at evolution, I, I, uh, probably about 15 years ago, I, I thought of that and dug into that, and I, I found out that there was no contradiction with science. But let me, uh, can, I, can I elaborate a little on something? Well, um, um, uh, if you could just, um, if you could focus on uh, that question. What, what I'm trying to get at is, you're investing, you're saying that you're investing a lot into finding the truth and that you're looking, you know, beneath the surface reading of the text in order to get the true meaning. But it seems as if that you have a lot of assumptions that that book is correct. And I'm not, okay. I'm not getting like, did you actually start off with that premise or do you actually, did you actually start the process okay. with the understanding uh, that I'll it possibly to, uh, could be wrong? I'll, add, I'll answer that, but I, I partially did with the evolution uh, that I said, but I'll answer that after uh, saying this. Jesus brought up something very interesting that we hear, and I believe uh, um, atheists have distorted. He said, believe, believe, believe. It never says blind faith. I, I just showed you a verse that said, prove all things. And uh, Well, anyway, so he said, believe, believe, believe. And I thought, well, why did he keep saying that? You know, we're, we're supposed to be critical thinkers. And I, I looked a little deeper, and I realized that he's saying that because if you don't at least think something might have a little merit, you won't take it seriously. And then you dig to find the truth. So if you're going to just say, you know, if you're just going to scoff right off the bat and say, you know, this is nonsense. I've heard my friends tell me contradictions. You know, I want to believe it's nonsense. You're not going to you're not going to give it an honest assessment. You're just not. I mean, you don't have to think that it's necessarily false or that it has no merit, but 
did you actually honestly consider the possibility that this uh, book may be wrong? The reason that I'm bringing this up in that way is because uh, just today I was at uh, the Lackland Air Force Base and we um, asked the trainees to identify where, where they come from, what religious, uh, religious system that they adhere to. And, you know, we have Norse followers, we have uh, Luciferians, we have Baha'i, we have Native American religions, we have all of these sets that have their own literature, that have their own books, some that are wildly different from others. And the fact is, they hold their books to be true as well. That's their interpretation Absolutely. the same way that you do. So what I'm saying is from, from my perspective, you're saying that your, that your book, the, the one that you follow is true. They're claiming, well, theirs is true as well. What I'm saying is how do I, as an objective observer, differentiate which one of your texts are true if you are using a lot of well, the same justifications you know, that they would you use? Know, you, know, you know, that's a very good question. And to me, it's the same question as there's a hundred and, you know, whatever, uh, 36, 106, whatever it is, different denominations out there of confusion. But here's, here's the key. The Bible claims to be the, you know, the only one true God of, of the, you know, of the world, whatever, the universe. And that the other religions are pagan religions and false. Now, um, I happen to think that if, you know, if one digs into it, you know, and gives it an honest assessment, and, and has, believes it has some merit, you know, not just to just disprove it and say, you know, and, and maybe ask questions. You know, I, I couldn't get away with it without, without asking questions. If I thought I was all, all that and just sat down with the Bible and tried to figure it out everything on my, on my own, I'd right. totally fumble. I had to ask but questions. I, I people, think people are I, too proud I, to ask questions. I, I think what Phil is getting at, though, is that you may be asking questions, but you are going in with a mindset of trying to shoehorn the answers you find into something you, you've already decided is true, well, and, ha and everything I, has I, I to point back saying. to the Bible being correct. I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying, right. but um, uh, here's the thing. You know, Christ said, my sheep know me and they hear my voice. You know, that's metaphorically here, not here mm -hmm. uh, with the audible uh, decibels, but... They, they understand, and the Bible uses who, a lot of metaphor, a lot of poem, and and uh, everyone, you know, <laughs> it, use, it uses Hebraic poetry, it uses parables, it uses metaphors, and I think I personally think, from what I've learned in my journey, I, I've had a very unique experience. Uh, um, about seven years ago, there, there was this uh, radio broadcast called The Voice of Reason Radio. And this guy was on there. He was the most common sense, uh, what do they call it, uh, common horse sense thinker you'd ever hear in your life. And uh, that just is Southern mentality. And he was saying stuff, you know, and it wasn't even a theology that caught my attention. He was saying stuff like, folks, if you're not willing to be wrong and admit you're wrong, you're never going to be right. And, uh, yeah. uh, you know, uh, translations are not fully inspired. You know, the Bible never said okay. they were. It's your original languages. You have to dig into it. You have to see what the Greek and Hebrew were. Right, you know, but it's challenging true. everything. Yeah, but I mean, you know, regardless of how the translations are, like, I don't, I'm not starting with any uh, predisposition to assume that the Bible is right about anything. Right, so, and, and that's so. Uh, what yeah. what would uh, like convince me otherwise? So, uh, what, can I just do this just real quick? So he was going to come out with something called the Christian Mythbuster series because uh -huh. he had he had debunked he had debunked a lot of these things, and he he had an unexpected death uh, in 2011, and I was a real ardent uh, uh, believer and supporter of what he was talking about because he was he, you know he goes he would always say you know Christian the sleeping giant of Christianity is, is about to awake uh, you know it's going to make the uh, the Great Awakening look like a mild disagreement and all this other stuff. Then he had an unexpected heart, heart attack in his late 50s, so I called his wife after he died, and I said, you know, uh, Anne Maria, you know, what's, what's going to happen to these things now? You know, John started this Christian Mythbuster series. He's think these I, finds Okay, are I hate to cut you off, but I feel like you're just using our show as an opportunity to witness, and uh, that's, no, not no, the way no. these, that, that's not the way these conversations 
normally go. I mean, you know, we've, we're going to have I'm a back and forth story. discussion. I, I'm not sure I okay. just want to okay. sit and wait for you to finish this whole story about how you heard some guy on Christian radio who used to not agree with you and now he does mm -hmm. agree with you. And so that somehow proves that you're right. Yeah, but my focus no, no. Uh, of my original question, Steve, was um, the way that you were coming at it, you, you put a, it seems as if you put a high, um, high threshold on finding truth and actually working for it uh, rather than just reading on the surface. But what I was trying to get at is why, like, why would yours, uh, let, me, let me see the way to phrase this, why, how can I... <laughs> look at your belief and differentiate it from someone else who holds a differing belief that's completely different, whether they have a different God set or multiple gods or one um, or none at all, how can I differentiate which one is actually true? Like what, what is the best yes, method that you can I, I, let me know how to go about this? Because you haven't really presented anything. Uh, as yeah, far, you, it's basically your I personal will. experience. I, I, I haven't heard anything that could yeah. really let me differentiate well, I, which one is actually true or not. Mm -hmm. I, I will I will answer that. Uh, but I had one more sentence that I had this is very important. Okay. And she said to me, Steve <laughs> she said to me, Steve, you're the answer to my prayers. So I started the Christian Mythbuster series and I've done a few books. Now re regarding what you're saying is uh I the easiest answer uh, is the proof is in the pudding. You know, you know, you read it, you 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 uh, you see if there's proper hermeneutics. You look at exegesis, or is it eisegesis, which is just the opposite. Well, wait a minute. Wait, uh, wait a minute. I mean, yeah, you, you can't you're... just look at a book and dis and decide that because it's internally consistent, it actually happened. I mean, uh, you know, there's a new Fifty well, Shades of Grey. <laughs> there's a new Fifty Shades of Grey movie out this weekend. Uh, I would imagine that everything in the movie is. You know, there are maybe no major continuity errors, but that doesn't mean that these people exist. Okay, well, can I can I give you one? For instance, uh, most Christians and atheists assume that Adam is is uh, Adam is assumed to be the first human. Uh, Wait, I'm sorry. Verse. Most uh, Christians and and atheists assume that Adam is the first human being in the Bible. In the, in the um, story, yeah. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, 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 I was, yeah. Okay, gotcha. It says, it has, it says uh, Genesis 2, 5, has, has God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. Okay. Well, okay. what I've discovered is other people's pre-Adamic groups become apparent the more you examine the Genesis account. Uh, creationists, in their attempt to make the Adam the first uh, father of humanity, use that above quote and and one basis for argument because they that, that's all they've heard. Now, um, but that's not what the Bible says. That was my first message um, okay. before I got on. Is that the Bible's true? It's just what you've heard and assumed about it that it's not. So, so what um, is the answer? And I have a follow-up question. How did you find out? I found. Okay. Well, can I answer the second one first? Um, uh, sure. <laughs> okay. Um, by studying and, and, and seeing what, what the text By studying is, what? The Bible? Well, that's, that's, the, that's the text in question. That's the source. You okay. Know, we're, uh, so, so, <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, so we, we have, you, you, you do understand where we're coming from, though, right? I mean, you're telling us all these things you read about what the Bible really says. But uh, even if you convinced us that the Bible really said something different than what we thought it did, it wouldn't make that much of a difference because we don't have an assumption going in that anything the Bible says is accurate or useful. Or that we should hold that book higher over other religions, the thousands over of other... Over Shades of Dick Gray. <laughs> wow. Well, well I, 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 happen to, I happen to think that, uh, that um, what's, what's the expression... Um, you know, like they say, like they say, a leopard usually shows its colors. Well, you know, um, a Christian will show their fruits, or a Christian, you know, and, and, and people deny this as well. But it, I think it's kind of hard to deny uh, America's Christian heritage, which became the greatest superpower in the world. But I'd rather just yeah, answer I'm this gonna now. deny that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, clearly these references uh, of uh, different different people in the Bible. Um, uh, uh, point to something beyond members of the animal kingdom. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just trying to look at my notes okay. here. Okay, 
Uh, but but I also know some very nice, friendly, charming, and influential people who are, let's say, Mormon. That doesn't mean I think that, that Mormonism is correct. Uh, I mean, okay. the, the fruits okay. of their work don't necessarily mean that they don't believe some things that aren't wildly out of left field. Okay. And I assume okay. you fair don't enough. think fair Mormonism enough. is correct. Okay, fair enough. Now, now I want to I show you something you've probably never seen. The Bible neither... Uh, okay, you look at Genesis, two, in Genesis 2, 7, it says man became. So what was he before he became? And then you look at um, uh, God fashioned the soil man. You know, there's a different translation. I happen to like mm -hmm. the uh, important, li important literal version. He fashioned the soil man. He would now call Adam and breathe his own breath, spirit animation of the mind into his nostrils. And, you know, you look at Hebrew and Greek lexicons, and, you know, they do help you out along the way. And Adam became a prophetic living soul. So, uh, you know, I found that Genesis is teaching the, uh, the beginning of prophecy. Adam was to be a light bearer to the nation, okay. just like the following heritage. Yeah. Then, it was mm -hmm. then it was Abraham. Right. You know, then it was David. Then it was Jesus right. Christ. I'm so, glad you, know. you got so much linguistic education out of this. But, I mean, I'm telling you again that we don't really care that much what the Bible says without some other reason to believe that... Uh, okay. Any of it is okay. accurate. Okay, through this digging, through this journey, this is a, a very unique experience I, I've learned. But you know, <laughs> uh, you know, someone would have to would have to decide for themselves. You know, I want everyone to think for themselves. I don't. Mm -hmm. You know, there's enough brainwashing going on already today. I don't. I don't tell anyone what to believe. But through this journey, I have learned that the Bible uh, shows forgeries of itself. It shows it shows these other yeah. religions to be for, forgeries of the Bible. Once you dig and find out what it really means, like there's no eternal hellfire. There's no, uh, you know, these words that they, they, they take found words something like, we uh, agree on. <laughs> it's, they take, but most atheists think the Bible teaches eternal hellfire. A lot of most Christians do. Yeah. I would, I would dare to say. So, you know, there's a lot of assumption going on here. And uh, you know, if you take the Greek Eonius for for that's translated forever in a Hebrew Olam, they're not words forever. They're to the age. Look at the literal version. So what does that mean? People burn to the age? No, it meant during the coming judgment they would burn to the age. Like when, when Jesus Christ uh, prophesied not one stone would be left upon another when they asked what the sign of his coming would be in AD 70. It started in AD 70, and that was the sign. It begins the day of the Lord. He said that it would happen within their generation. So, you know, Christians are so deluded, they're looking today for Christ to return. They're looking for things that happened 2,000 years ago, and the writing was on the wall. And he said not one would be standing here. I mean, um, um, some would be standing, sorry, some would be standing here um, before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom, taste of death. Okay. So, you know, he was, telling, he was telling them right there it was about to happen, yeah. revelation, you know, things soon to come right. to pass. Now, yeah, now, it, you it's you, still now, a very interesting you, story, well, or not all that interesting. But yeah. So, I mean, if you delude and confuse enough okay. passages, then... You know, it's going to look like it's uh, yeah, something I, wrong, I'm but. feeling like this conversation is just going to stay really one-sided, and I'm not getting very much out of it. Yeah, because like, I feel like we're trying to say why this stuff isn't landing home with us, and you're just ignoring us and, ki and continuing to say the thing. I'm trying, I'm you, trying to answer. You know, I, I'm only It's not through, working. I got, I got you. But what, see, what, you're, what you've been giving are more details of the story in your analysis of different components of the story in the book. And what we're saying is, uh, rather than giving us additional components of the story, different verses, and your interpretation of those verses, what we're asking for is uh, some way to substantiate the claims that the book is true itself. Like, why should we be paying attention to uh, this book? But then when we ask that you go back into more, uh, more verses, going into more analysis of what you've seen in the Bible over time, not necessarily um, a attacking the claim of is the Bible true in and of itself. Uh, right now you haven't done anything in regards to that front. So we're kind of left in the same place that we started off. Well, can, with I, can, I, can, I, can I give you a little something on why Adam, why the Bible teaches Adam is not the first man? In first Corinthians, I, know, I don't, no, I don't, I don't think care it would be, what the Bible no. teaches. Right, I don't I think want, it would be beneficial yeah. to the show or uh, the audience if we can't get past... <laughs> Right. If we can't get past the initial portion of, if, is it actually true in the first place? Then once we substantiate that fact, then you can go into your stories or the different intricacies all you want to. But we well, need to start what, what from the initial take, premise. What would it take? 
well, what would it take to prove that it is true in the first place? I mean, I have no idea. You're the one presenting the claim that it is true. Therefore, I mean, it would take a lot because the, I I mean, to start with, the Bible, like, indicates, I mean, just at face value, an order of in which things were created that doesn't make any sense compared to modern science. I mean, like, for one thing, it says that uh, the sun was created after plants. So that's assuming yeah. that's assuming that's assuming that uh, that Genesis one is talking about the creation of our physical universe. That's okay. not what it's talking so, about. <laughs> so <laughs> apparently it's very it's very obscure and it doesn't actually mean the things that it appears to say. No, and you, so no, the here's good, the key. Here's the key, you right. gotta let it interpret itself. Just like yeah. just like any ancient text. It's only <laughs> books, <laughs> books don't interpret themselves. Interpretation is done through people's minds. <laughs> like the Wait, but yeah okay can i just give you a quick example you let heaven uh, and earth define I, I, it i don't know okay it yeah matter. this is i mean i don't i'm not sure if it's going to help anything on its nope. own. nope yeah okay <laughs> <Let's just call laughs> that. okay well people are happy with that decision <laughs> all right i thought they were enjoying it out there so i thought <laughs> right uh yeah i mean we got to put a time limit on yeah, How just, much of the show one person can take. Uh, and so, you know, I'm going to go ahead and take an atheist. Even though we do have uh, other theists lined up today, uh, it's one of those days. <laughs> okay. um, but uh, let's see. Uh, Tate, you're the lucky guy today. You may be, <laughs> as far as I know, you may be the only atheist who gets through today. Tate in Missouri City. You still there? Oh. Hey. Yes. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes, Hi. How are you? Oh, hey guys. Hey Russell. Hey Phil. How you guys doing? Pretty good. Doing How are you? Well. Uh, I'm pretty good. I actually just got off of an eight-hour shift of work recently. I'm like, hey, I got time to call in if possible, and I'm really excited that you guys picked me. Well, glad you could make it. <laughs> uh, what's um, up? All right. Well, a lot actually. I'm um, I am an atheist, but I've only identified as one for the past couple of months. I'm oh, uh, welcome. I'm a night. Oh, th- <laughs> thanks, Rose. I'm uh, I'm almost twenty years old, and I was a very staunch uh, Baptist up until I was, and I think it was seventeen. Yeah, it was seventeen. Then just one day in class. I realized, wow, if my parents didn't teach me this stuff, I wouldn't believe in any of it. So then I went down the deist route for a while, you know, and um, mm-hmm. then, then, yeah, I did that for about a year and a half. And on one of my think days, which was this, it happened to be this past um, September 11th anniversary, I just, of all the things that I think about on that kind of day, I started thinking about what I believed, and then I realized that I didn't believe. (laughs) And Mm. from then on, I've kind of just been atheist. Okay, well, uh, glad you made that decision. Yeah, that... Um, Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I I know that done... I know it's not really a positive thing, like exactly a positive sounding thing exactly, but I've been pretty comfortable with the situation. There's been, of course, a bit of a tangle within my family because I'm the only one, but it hasn't been anything so severe that I'm like fearing for anything, you know, like eviction. But I've been really happy about it at, at work. I uh, I bag people's groceries and push the cart around at Kroger, and mm-hmm. I go in pretty much every day since this past Christmas. I've worn this necklace that says "Proud Atheist," and people usually smile. I've actually had a couple of people who told me they were atheists and that it made their day to see me kind of just being proud with it because nobody shut me down. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, good for you. Yeah, that's 
I mean, it's definitely not everyone's experience, but um, that sounds pretty, uh, a, a pretty good way to, I guess, come um, out of that portion. Everyone's different. Everyone has a unique perspective, unique family issues, but that sounds like a, a pretty calm transition over time from what you've said. All right. I, uh, I mean, I, I would, I like, caution people that, like, um, you know, I, I am absolutely in favor of uh, being out as an atheist uh, if you can uh, afford to, and it sounds like you can. Um, it seems to me that, that uh, a lot of other people might have different experiences and uh, uh, risk some trouble at work, um, and it would be difficult to advise them on what to do in that situation because... Uh, you know, I don't necessarily want somebody pushing Christianity on me at work, and uh, at the same time, it's it's maybe a gray area uh, if uh, people who aren't atheists uh, <laughs> want to deal with the, that message while they're shopping. Uh, but I'm not telling you not to do it. I'm just mm -hmm. saying uh, it. Uh, well, he, he said it was a necklace, so I guess it would, it would be right. analogous to people wearing the cross necklaces. Yeah, and just. Kind of have yeah, no, around I'm not, I don't think it's a big deal. Yeah, I don't think so right. either. Yeah, I I understand what you guys mean because <laughs> believe me, there's like very a uh, huge number of shoppers that come in wearing mm -hmm. cross necklaces. But I'm not doing it because of that. I'm doing it because like the people come in, they know that I'm a nice employee. The yeah. supervisors, they all love me. So in a way, I guess for people who aren't very familiar with seeing somebody who is just sort of a vocal atheist. I guess I'm trying to destigmatize in my community if there's any destigmatizing yeah. that needs well, to be done. I am definitely, uh, you know, glad you're out there uh, yeah. promoting a positive message for sure. Yeah, that's that's definitely something. You know, I'm always smiling, asking right. people how their day goes, yeah. and sending them off with their groceries. You know, have a wonderful day, sir, ma'am, kid. Yeah. Yeah. But, so, um, that sounds cool. Yeah, did did you have a, a question or something? Uh yes. In for the, of course for the past several months I've uh, had a couple of different religious conversations with my father who is very very deeply religious still. Uh my uh, he and he and my mom they're both pretty strong believers, but she is not exactly, you know, she doesn't, she's not really that staunch. She's pretty relaxed about it. I would feel much better talking about it with her, but he's, um, he's a guy who's kind of difficult to talk to because um, you could talk about things like science or philosophy, and I've had the discussions where it just boils down to you know, you just got to have faith or um, he even, our last one was when we saw the movie Deepwater Horizon and he works in, he works around natural gas. His mm -hmm. living, his occupation consists around being the head of some natural gas. Um, I, I forget, is that's a, like a horror movie, isn't it? I think there was when an accident happened yeah. on a rig yeah. or something to that. Uh, I, I thought yeah. that was yeah. It. That okay. was that was the one about the Deepwater Horizon oil oh. spill. And, oh, uh, oh, right, right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay, that was it. And so, like he under, I know that he understands science to a certain degree. Like he understands a lot of the components and the chemistry of what can make up things like oil, petroleum, gasoline, all those, but. At the same time, when it comes to things like biology and the age of the Earth, he's a sort of young Earth creationist or one of those creation scientists. He's bas like he's basically kind of a uh, Ken Ham wet dream. Oh wow! <laughs> In a way. Well, that must but, make Thanksgiving very entertaining <laughs> and awkward. <laughs> Does he actually but, know you're an atheist already, or are you trying to figure out how to come out to him? Uh, he already knows. Okay. I've okay. pretty much everybody knows. I've told it to friends, family. Yeah. Everybody knows. And I, I take it he doesn't approve. Uh, he wishes that I would go back to being a Christian. 
sure. to put it mildly. <laughs> okay. Well, uh... and, and so, like, the question part of it was, do you, is there, like, any ways particularly that you think um, you could talk to somebody who perhaps just holds that kind of a mindset? Um, you want to well, take this? Yeah, I, I will. Okay. Um, I, I grew up... Uh, Tate, I grew up in a very religious family. One side is a little more gung-ho about it than the other. But mm -hmm. in the situations that I've actually had conversations with a few, uh, you know, a cousin here or two, or just, uh, or even my dad, who was uh, very open-minded, I, I was lucky enough not to have a lot of pushback from him because he's done a lot of searching for uh, life itself. Right now he's, he goes to, like, a universal universal Unitarian Church versus a specific denomination. But a lot of people in my family are very staunch Christians and they won't hear anything else. Um, it's just, that's just something you don't do. That's something you don't talk about. So my experience with that, actually trying to breach that subject, even tangentially talking about, you know, scientific discovery or something Along that side, um, a lot of folks in my family will find a way to tie it back to God in some way or religion. Like they'll find a way to um, comport it with their belief system. And I haven't had m much luck having those conversations. So in, in trying to keep the peace uh, with the family, I usually just don't breach the subject. Like we get together for family events and holidays and we have a good time. And that's just something that... I choose not to discuss, and if someone wants to discuss it, then I kind of we kind of set the ground rules for how that discussion will take place. You know, no no screaming, no yelling. You know, keep you know, keep emotions at a minimum, and just talk about whatever the subject matter happens to be. But I find that they're just not at that point. They're not ready to have that conversation, or ready to uh, really respond or accept that information that. I give them, you know, regardless of what that topic is, if it conflicts with their belief system, it's just a wall goes up and nothing will go through it and it starts antagonizing uh, people and it can cause emotional, uh, emotional regress, I'll say it in that way. But it's just, when someone's not open to having the conversation, it's very difficult to have a conversation with that person. It's the simplest way that I can okay. uh, really break it down. But... If you want to have a conversation, if your father is open to actually having the conversation and will actually have a conversation rather than just one person talking at one person and then the other person just talking at the other and not really communicating and getting anywhere, um, it's, you're the best one to evaluate the situation. You know your father the best. You know what your circumstances are. And uh, you just have to examine how important this is to you to have this conversation, how important is it to you for your father to accept uh, who you are? Do you even care that he accepts you or not? Will you be able to uh, live your life and enjoy yourself without that acceptance and still keep your love for him and vice versa him to you? It's just, it's, it's very hard for someone to, uh, for me to suggest to someone what course of action you should pursue. It's just looking at your situation and fi figuring out what's most important to you, like how do you, do you want to proceed? How is important is it to you for him to know and yeah. understand where you're coming from and how you arrive I there? I agree with the idea of setting ground rules because those can go yeah. south really fast. And, yeah. uh, you know, I think both of you should maybe think about what you want to get out of it beyond yeah. just changing the other person's position because that hardly ever happens. Right. And you should both know that going in. Um, and so, you know, a little upfront stuff about how, hey, I'm probably going to continue to disagree with you, but I want you to know I love you no matter how this conversation goes. And maybe some rules like, you know, okay, we'll each talk for five minutes or something like that. Like it may seem a little too formal to put uh, restrictions like that on, your, uh, on a conversation with your family, but I mean, you know, 
anybody who's ever been in any kind of counseling or, or uh, discussion or, or therapy with more than one person or tried to, let's say, run a board meeting, oh my God, <laughs> um, you, you know, and try to make sure everyone gets their fair say, you might find that it's a good idea to just have sort of a structured conversation instead of just something that could break down into both of you yelling at each other. Mm -hmm. I, one of um, the, I guess, I wouldn't say it's an agreement, it just kind of formed out of our conversation, but there's one person that's close to me that our, our arrangement is that, you know, she's very re religious, uh, she's still holding on to it with all of her might, but uh, mm -hmm. she cares about me, she's curious about my mindset, uh, and she knows that I do you know, all these volunteer things, and she sees the pictures and all that kind of good. So she wants to, you know, know where I'm coming from and what exactly I believe because uh, she did approach me uh, thinking that I uh, was advocating that, yes, there is no God, you know, making that positive claim. And I'm like, well, no, I'm not actually making that claim. And having to explain to her what it is, what we do is we'll take it uh, just in little little chunks. When we get together, we talk about everything under the sun. We we'll go out or shopping, whatever else is going on. And she's the one that initializes the question. And so every time it happens, she'll get a very serious face. And she'll present a question like uh, this uh, very recently. She asked, well, well, you know, have you considered other religions? Have you considered going into another portion? And I said, well, it's this, we had a conversation about why that wasn't up to par as well, because the same reason I'm not a Christian is the same reason I'm not a Mormon either. Uh, for lack of evidence for both. That's why I haven't filled in that portion. But she really wants me to believe in a God, period, which is an interesting uh, way to go about it. But we just take it like that. It's very amicable. She listens to what I have to say. I listen to where she's coming from and try to empathize with what, uh, what background she's come from and how she's approaching the situation. And five to seven minutes later, we're back on to whatever other topic is going on. And that's how it goes. And this happens like, months apart from each other. She'll get a little tidbit and then let it go. And we just keep on going. But we're still amicable, we're still nice, and we still love each other. We just, yeah. it's, you know, it's worked for us. So. But that's really awesome to hear. And okay. that is, I think that's kind of, that is basically what my father and I do on a small scale, is we, we usually do make up pretty quickly after that if we have something that ever gets heated is he like i i know that you guys probably already assume i'm not trying to give off the wrong impression and he he loves the family dearly he doesn't neglect us in any way really mm -hmm. and just everything it's just like we have our differences and you know those could just turn into occasional skirmishes but you know, i it's yeah, it's good. I mean, I would say that you have it better than a lot of people who have religious families. Because, I mean, yeah. I've certainly heard uh, of much worse interactions with family members. Yes. And so I'm glad you don't have to live deal with that. Right. So, well, uh, like he, he knows that at some point in the future that I definitely do want a family. But he's told me things... Like, I, I'd say that probably, like, the thing that I felt most uncomfortable about him saying is that when he has grandkids and we see him, he will, it's possible they might start proselytizing to them, but I don't worry about well, that too much. <laughs> mm. uh, I mean, you're going to be in charge of uh, your kids, and he's not. Agreed. So you might find it necessary in the same vein to sort of set ground rules uh, for his visitation with your kids because, I mean, it's one thing to have respectful conversations with another person. It's another thing to sort of uh, intentionally undermine your parenting and your authority in front of your kids. Uh, but that's something you're going to have to deal with when you come to it. And I think we're going to need right. to move on for now. All right. So. All right. Yeah, good luck in your Thanks conversations, Tate, yeah. and, uh, you know, contact us on Thank Facebook or... Much. Uh, right. Facebook or email or if you have any other questions and but yeah that type of thing it's just it's very individualistic everyone's situation is unique right. so giving advice on that can be hard but and there's a lot of support out there so yep. hope you can find it 
So uh, we're almost to six o'clock now, but we got a little bit of a late start due to uh, the issues up front. Technical so, stuff. I mean, you know, I'm <laughs> going to not uh, shortchange people who are listening to this. Uh, and I am going to make a decision that some people will appreciate and some people I'm betting won't. Oh, dear. But, <laughs> but uh, you know, it's, uh, we don't, we have a policy of trying not to let one caller monopolize the show if they call back week after week. But, you know, I haven't heard from this guy in a while and I kind of miss him. <laughs> Uh, so, okay. sorry to the people who are not going to be fans of the last 15 minutes of the show, but Hamish, Hamish. how you doing, Hello. buddy? <laughs> Russell Glass, nice to speak to you again. Good to talk Enjoy to you. What do you, approve, what do you disapprove of today? Actually, I called with a grave disapproval, and I, I first of all disapprove of your jovial attitude towards it. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, Hamish, uh, Hamish I'm, I'm very, very sorry, sorry to hear from you. Hamish, be before you jump in there, uh, do you have a stream playing in the background? Yeah. No? Yeah. I do not. Because I, I hear an echo. We're echoing in the yeah. background. Like, you're not echoing, but we are. This is better. Uh, maybe. This is better. Uh, it's quieter now. Yeah, I least. think so. I think I think so. All right. We'll, we'll live with it. <laughs> what I called to discuss was the disgusting rise I have seen over the past year of demagoguery throughout the world, and how I feel it reveals that there are fewer atheists than you might believe. Okay. Because even well, the that, atheists that's two cling different to subjects. Their idols. <laughs> I think they're filthy celebrities. Like Donald Trump and oh. Sam Harris. Don't pin, don't pin Donald Trump on us, okay? <laughs> okay, thanks. I, so, I mean, I'm just going to say that Donald Trump actually had the backing of a larger share of evangelical Christians yeah. than any politician has gotten in decades. So while some atheists are disagreeing about this, like we aren't necessarily the ones primarily responsible for voting for him. The okay. Atheists worship others like Sam Harris and Kim Kardashian. I don't worship Sam Harris, worship. I'm telling you that. You may not, Russell. Okay. But you are in a minority, and I feel that this reveals I, that many who call I themselves atheists it. just spite God and they worship their idols. Okay, I don't think you're right. I, no. Do you, do you actually talk to other atheists when you're not calling this show? Like, do you, do you know I many people? I encounter people who claim to be atheists all the time. Okay, like face to face or on the internet or what? Yes, yes, face to face. Okay, mm -hmm. I know a friend whose son has posters on his wall of okay. celebrities who he prays to. What? I'm sorry. I don't believe you. Yeah, that. Not not in so many words, but what the feeling is well, the same. The... I mean, praying to somebody is a very specific claim. You, I mean, right. versus just what admiration. What do you mean, gotten of... so many words? The same sort of admiration or reverence that is shown to famous footballers. Okay. I don't know anyone who prays to famous footballers either. Images. Do you, you do not seem to be taking my gripe seriously, Russell. Well, it I doesn't you, sound like a very serious just, claim that you're making. You seem to exaggerate a lot. You might feel that it is exaggerated, mm -hmm. but you do have a son, do you not, Russell? Yeah. Does he not have heroes? I'm trying to think. <laughs> I, I mean, he has people he's into. I mean, man, wow. I should know better. No dad there. of the year award to you. Yeah. No, <laughs> not to me. Uh, I mean, let's you, see. He was. I tell you uh, that you do not know your own son's heroes. Yeah. Well, I mean, I know he has authors that he really admires. Uh, you know, well, it's been a few years since The Hunger Games. I think he's moved on past that. But he really dug Suzanne Collins and also Jennifer Lawrence, which I don't blame does, him for. Uh, he he's he's a big of fan of uh, the game League of Legends, and I imagine oh, no. that he follows a number of streamers. Uh, I, I'm not personally into that one, but... Uh, Whoa. Rude. <laughs> Um, but I mean, I don't think that he has anyone he worships and prays to. 
That's that's way outside my experience with him. Does he never invoke their names while dreaming what? or before a game? No. Invoke their names? <laughs> no. Look at <laughs> the amount of attention and adulation that our society what? affords Look, certain you know, I'm people. I'm not completely ignorant of what he does during a game. I watched him and played with him over a headset before because uh, we're in separate rooms. Uh, I mean... I've never noticed him saying, oh, great and holy, you know, <laughs> Pewdie, badass 729 or, right? or whatever. <laughs> no. I'm going to have to Google a famous <laughs> League of Legends <laughs> player. But you, you're saying things about my son that you don't actually know and aren't true in my experience. That may be so for your son. Soren Bjerg. I'm sure all the League of Legends <laughs> players out there will squee now. <laughs> There is evidence of the immense and enormous adulation and worship that celebrities receive in today's culture. Well, uh, like I said, a lot of self-described Christians do that. So is your problem people's admiration that they show towards celebrities and their deference to them? Is that, was that your... The instinct, right? the instinct to worship is innate to all humans. You know what? I, I think maybe we actually got some common ground here. Because I think that it is actually a generally a very unhealthy attitude to, uh, to put all your trust in uh, particular individuals who may be famous or loud or powerful. Uh, I think a certain amount of healthy skepticism uh, for whoever you're dealing with, including the two of us, certainly, mm -hmm. Uh, is is very healthy. So, uh, you know, I'm actually willing to agree with you on this. If you know people who act like that and worship, let's say, Sam Harris, I'm going to be the first in line to tell them, you know, hey, quit doing that. Yeah, but he, was, he was referencing worship and praying, too, and that was... Well, that, that seems that so specific. I, I was just like, that seems a little hyperbolic there, but... I have a niece... Mm -hmm. who has posters of certain boy bands in her room. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Often are you before are them and kissing them. Okay. Uh, I'm just wondering, are you familiar with the concept of puberty? Because I think this may be a better explanation than actual worship. You think that those two things are mutually exclusive? No. Perhaps uh, it is more... Likely that puberty induces feelings of worship amongst the population. Oh, they induce a lot of feelings. <laughs> and how would you describe that if not to worship? I, well, do I have to say that word again? <laughs> uh, I, I would describe it as... Uh, okay, so when kids grow up... <laughs> they start developing these hormones, <laughs> which sort of cloud their judgment for a few years. Uh, and, and uh, I, I mean, you know, it's not always necessarily towards celebrities. Sometimes it's actual people that they know, mm -hmm. which is uh, <laughs> yada, yada, yada. That's how the species perpetuates itself. Wow. We just had the talk what on TAE. What are you trying to say <laughs> in such covert language, Russell? What? It feels as if you're trying to make some sort of point, but you're weaseling your way around it. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm saying that your teenage girls are probably interested in sex right now. And why would you believe that? Because I know people. Because of hormones? Yeah. I do not see how this would be related to my niece's attitude towards these boy bands it seems very romantic you don't okay. <laughs> well romantic love they and really sex are mean. actually have a complex interaction with each other right i mean i don't <laughs> i don't really know how much you need me to explain this stuff or i mean yeah, I, I, <laughs> well, I, are you married 
my nieces come to church uh -huh. every week. The, and so you think they never think about sex? They think about the sinful things they think of okay. due to sin and Adam, but everyone thinks of something. That doesn't mean I, I think of genocide every day. I Ooh. think of uh, really. Uh, I'm so <laughs> Okay, that's... that that doesn't seem typical to me. But I no. mean, well, unless you think of the Holocaust, do you not think of genocide? Oh. oh, yeah. I mean, I don't think about it every day, but I mean, I'm concerned about genocide and and uh, give it a significant amount of thought. Sure. Right. Well, this is what they. But mean. I don't think because that's what your nieces thought, are thinking so when they look at their posters. You engage in. It. What? It's Russell. I said the audio cut out a little. Your your uh, call is a little choppy. In the thing. Yeah. Sorry, could you say that last part again? Simply having thoughts of a thing does not show that you approve or are interested in okay. engaging in the thing in question. All right. Okay. So I mean, I I guess would it be fair to say that uh, the people you know who have very high regard for Sam Harris or anyone, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that they worship them? Uh, I think it exists on a gradient. Me too. Sure. And and I here, think again, common ground. <laughs> the most, who do you view as the most passionate and devoted people in the world? Hmm? Who do you Which people uh, who do you, you feel are the most passionate and devoted to a certain idol? Is it teenage girls or is it North Koreans or Christians in your view? That's a tough one. Yeah, that is a... <laughs> uh, I'm not sure how, who I would fall into. I don't know. The, what, yeah. what about fundamentalist Christians? Do I get to include those too? Absolutely. Okay. And fundamentalist Christians are aligned right. in their so, worship and, towards and again, the proper. Given the choice, given the question, do I think fundamentalist Christians are more or less devoted than uh, North Koreans? That they seem very similar to me. So that's a tough call too. And what about what about teenage girls then towards their what? idols and famous well, boys and whatever? I mean, the thing about puberty is that you get older most of the time, and uh, you know. But for a while, like you were a teenage boy once, I assume. Were you ever so really you, into you, somebody you so much? Romantic passion will fade. Yeah, were were you ever really so into a, a girl or uh, or anyone? Yes. Uh, that that like you thought about them constantly for for a while i was i would say uh, there was a character on the soap opera that i was during yeah. that age it was uh there was a home, certain like, cartoon yeah, mermaid that i couldn't get out of my head for a few months <laughs> oh dear <laughs> do you feel that the passion of infatuation is always fleeting within humans no, people have lots of different experiences, and some people don't get more mature about the objects of their obsessions. Feel, do you not believe that teenage girls and perhaps boys to some extent, or adult or child boys who obsess over superheroes or <laughs> sportsmen, do you yeah. not feel that these people are the most devoted to their idols? Okay, I I've lost know. track of what your point was. Barring true Christians who are devoted, of course, to the Lord. Huh? Do you feel that as you get older, your, your devotion to idols diminishes in general? Um, ideally, yes. We do not live in an ideal world, Russell. Okay. Well, so, I mean, and so there are there are a lot of people. 
there are a lot of people who don't get over uh, their their love of whatever they're devoted to. I do believe I must have a word with my sister about my niece's behavior. Oh, How would I'm... you recommend I go about it? Okay. If, if your I nieces are ever listening to this show, I'm sorry, you guys. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not sure where it's... I'm not sure where this was going, honestly. Like, what was what it started off as obsession with um, entertainers or things like, and maybe people focusing too much on that, and then turned into boy bands, uh, little girls and Have boy you bands. And, I assume yeah. that both of you are devoted to science in some regard. I think that science is an important principle for learning about the way the world really works. So, then sure. allow me to frame this in a way that an atheist would agree with. Okay. Do you not see in the world that science is so important, and yet the things that people pay attention to are things like reality TV stars <laughs> do nothing meaningful with Yeah, them. I can't stand most reality TV personally. That's you personally. Russell. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, not see and this as a does it with society. does it bug me when people are getting obsessed with what seems like trivial nonsense? Uh, yes, and I try to talk them out of it at every opportunity if they are getting so obsessed with something that it seems unhealthy. Do you feel that people are always drawn? To the stupider aspects of the world. Always? Or no. always, yeah, yeah. I would disagree with that. In general, as a society. Um not necessarily. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of uh, positive optimism that uh, about people in general that I and can tell you which don't share. Is this founded? Huh? Upon which evidence is this optimism founded? Uh all the wonderful people that I know in the atheist community and all the people I've talked to, even people like yourself with whom I wildly disagree, but who seems to be coming from a place of s genuinely caring for people yeah. and, and being concerned about people's well-being, no matter how misguided I might think your solutions are. And then like, you are focused, I believe, on a bias in which you view primarily the people with whom you interact mm -hmm. as a subset, as a cross section of society as a whole. You may I'm sorry, was that a question? Yeah, people right. who agree with you, but on the wider scale of things, there is so much horror and stupidity in the world. There's a lot sure. of horror and stupidity in the world, absolutely. I feel that the horror and stupidity greatly outweighs the truthful devotion towards the proper things. The proper things people, being... You can, you and I may disagree on that one, but I would like <laughs> yes, to find some fair. common ground. Okay. I um, do not believe people should be more focused on science. Not necessarily. Depends on if it's their thing. I mean, yes, in general, I think people should get a better understanding and appreciation of science. But you seem to be putting science in a role that you would understand, which is the object of single-minded worship and devotion. And I don't think people should be heading in that direction. Let me ask you this then. Okay. But we are I, seriously running out of time, so we're gonna. So when you ask it, do it with an eye towards wrapping up the conversation on a note you will be satisfied with. Very well. Now let me <laughs> to ask you this: Why is it, in your view, that celebrities like the Kardashians and <laughs> Donald Trump yeah. are so much more popular? than celebrities who I assume you would admire, such as Brian Cox or I barely know anything Noam about Chomsky. Brian Cox. I know a little bit about Noam Chomsky. 
you understand the main gist of my question? Though? I do, but I think you're assuming that there are people that I hold in that level of regard and, and focus uh, as, let's say, Jesus for you, or boy bands Look for your teenage girls, and I don't. Have such devotion to Beyonce. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you do not have this devotion towards more respectable people. Mm-hmm. More respectful people, wow. That's... It's just, so... This is not meant as a slight to Beyonce, of course. <laughs> of course, you, 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 you can't insult the Queen Bee, I got Yeah, you. yeah, Phil, I can see Phil bristling <laughs> over here. <laughs> but, I mean, you're saying that don't you think people should be... Don't we, th or asking us, do we think more people should be focused on more, uh, I guess, scientific, scientifically minded individual versus... Yeah, or more interested in building the, out their right. knowledge base. But, I mean, you, sure. it's hard to dictate to... Way of phrasing it here. It's hard to dictate to someone Look. what they should like and what they should find entertaining. People go out and see... hubristic sportsmen, hubristic sports idols who have okay. beat their women and do drugs and all these horrible things and they yeah, get so much cool. adulation. Right, sure. And what, but why is it this way? Why do people not direct their adulation towards more worthy people? Why do they need to direct adulation toward anything? I think that what adulation is not that good. to direct adulation towards someone, why must they devote it to these people? I would suggest um, as a start to ask someone who does have devotion towards one of these people as far as what you interpret, ask them why they feel that way and try to see where they're coming from. Like, uh, you're saying, why do, why do they prefer this person versus this person, which they should be admiring? And I'm not sure if that's going to uh, follow people or be able to be practically they applied to such individuals. illogical defenses of their idols when questioned. My nieces, when I question well, <laughs> why they love a certain boy band, despite the horrible things they do and the laws they break and yeah. the vile messages mm -hmm. they propagate, they simply excuse them and say, they're not really like that. Oh, they're yeah. lovely people. Psy oh, they're Psychology amazing. is complicated, man. People get into all kinds of yeah. uh, like bad mindsets about things that they should know better about. People get into abusive relationships. Uh, uh, you know, pe people experience cognitive dissonance, which is a term that you ought to look up because it has a lot to do with what you're saying. Maybe not a lot to do with your main point, um, but you're asking why people behave in, uh, in harmful ways, and that's really complicated, and there's lots and lots written about it. Yeah, I would suggest like start looking up that type of thing. If you ask what you're interested in versus calling you know, an atheist experience show to ask, you know, why does the world do things in this manner versus what they should be focusing on over here? You I was, not yeah, feel just, that people worship yeah, yeah. money. Some do. Yeah, as far as I can say. How would you define okay. worship? Uh, this is too much to, uh, <laughs> for, I mean, you know, we are actually like eight minutes over well when I was so. planning to end the show. But so I must, I must know. conclude this call yeah. by saying... <laughs> Deeply troubled by the atheist movement. Okay, and all the but you're that again. I think you're blaming stuff on the atheist movement that we don't. Yeah, I th I still think you're just blaming stuff on the atheist movement that you don't like without looking into whether we actually caused it or whether uh, it is equally to pin on deeply religious people as well. I just, when people. Are worshiping their false idols, they are not uh -huh. thinking of the Lord Jesus. Yep, and okay. neither am I. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you for calling. Was, okay. <laughs> I'll talk to you maybe well, not next time, awesome. but but some other time I'm right. sure we'll talk again. Right. Don't <laughs> sin too much. Okay. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Phil. <laughs> I'm sorry. To, <laughs> you, I mean, it was very interesting. Yeah. Uh, an array of callers today, I think. <laughs> yeah.
Well, uh, it's been good having you on again. Uh, thank you guys. We'll uh, be on again next week. See you at Star of India tonight. Bye. Have a good night. Hi, this is Russell Glasser, host of The Atheist Experience. You know, The Atheist Experience is made possible by volunteers and the generous support of viewers like you. If the promotion of positive atheist culture and separation of church and state are values that you hold, please consider contributing by becoming an ACA member or visiting our product page at EvolveFish.com under the Partner tab. Thank you.